for this year, I've been telling myself is that my next looks nothing like my now. My next looks nothing like my now. And if I know that to be true, I've got to make a plan for what I want my next to look like. Because again, I'm beginning with the end in mind. So I'm going to put this um, PowerPoint up for you and I want to talk to you about this. I try not to be the sort of person that talks off the screen because it bothers me when students do that. Uh, get PowerPoints and they talk entirely off the screen. So uh, we're going to have a good time and I'm going to go through this with you. Let me see, I could just make it. Okay. Uh-oh, here we go. So beginning with the end in mind, guys, is really, really about, uh, really, really about developing a clear picture of what we want for our life, right? Um, and when we develop a clear picture for what we want for our life, that means that we're setting a, a mental game plan in place. I want to think of it as like a jigsaw puzzle. I put a picture of a jigsaw puzzle up because uh, if any of you were like me when you were little, you used to love to do a good puzzle, right? Well, maybe not you guys because you had the internet. I didn't when I was little, okay? That's telling too much about my age, but you get it, right? So for fun, especially when I go to my grandmother's house, I would get these um, jigsaw puzzles from Walgreens and it may have three or 400 pieces. And the only way that you knew how, the only way that I knew or other people who did puzzles knew how to put them together was because they, there was a picture on the box that showed you what the end result would look like, right? Now, the excitement in that is that you have three, 400 just random pieces. Jordan, mute yourself. So you have three or 400 random pieces. And so you have to take your time and work on making these random pieces look like the end result that is on the box. So when we talk about this idea of beginning with the end in mind, I want for us to think about what that means exactly, right? One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite uh, scriptures, and I think this is a universal thing, right? It, it doesn't really have anything to do with religion, but I took this particular thing from the Bible, which happens to be a text that I love, right? Um, it says, which one of you, when he builds a watchtower, builds a house, does not first sit down and count the costs to see if he has enough to finish it? Otherwise, he has laid a foundation and is unable to finish the building. And everybody who see it will ridicule him because this man began to build and was not able to finish. So here, what happens is, is we have an analogy, a short story, a metaphor that compares our life to the building of a house. So the house that we're building is this future that we're planning for ourselves, right? But what happens is with anything that we do, with anything that we build, even our futures, we've got to make sure that we have a blueprint for what that's going to look like, right? Just like you wouldn't do something like bake a cake without having a recipe. Even if the recipe is in your mind is something that has been passed down from your grandparents, you still have a blueprint for how to bake that cake. And so what happens is we see that most, most people, right? People do who, who live with regret, people that are ineffective, even when we look at some of our peers, right? Who are failing classes and, and not doing as well as they could be doing. It is usually because they have no clear goal or plan in place. This just not, they, they, they're just doing whatever, right? There's no plan, 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 they're living by the seat of their pants. You know, they really have taken the statement YOLO to be something that they live by without thinking about the consequences of what that means. Because if you really want to get technical about the statement YOLO, you only live once, that means that this, I have one time to get this life right. I've got one time, one chance, 
one opportunity to get this life right. So we want to make sure that we're not ineffective but that we're effective in everything that we do. Because let's be honest, folks, college is not free. And even if you're getting a scholarship, right? If you're getting some kind of scholarship for your academic excellence, that's not for you. You have to work hard to get that scholarship. So you don't want to waste time, effort, and money by not doing your very best. Because the, also another truth that we don't talk about enough is, is that when you leave Cheney University, if you should be so blessed to graduate with a degree, there is a necessity in the knowledge that you have accumulated, right? Because the truth of the matter is you're gonna to have to compete against a whole bunch of people. And those people are from around the world because now we live in a global marketplace. You're not just competing against folks that went to Cheney. You're not just competing against people that live in Pennsylvania, you're competing against people from around the world for jobs that, that are not guaranteed, especially if you don't have a knowledge base. You said, Dr. Hall, what does that mean when you talk about this knowledge base? That means you cannot afford to go to class just to pass. That means that the information that you get when you go to class has to be retained, it has to be knowledge. When we attain knowledge, that means that knowledge and the ability to apply what we learn go hand in hand. And this is important. I want to tell you, even at the ripe old age of 46, people are still asking me, what was your dissertation about? And I finished my dissertation many, many, many years ago. They're still trying to figure out what it was that I learned when I was in college. That means that I could not afford, right? In retrospect, to just pass a class, that means that I had to make every effort possible to attain and retain the information that I received when I went to classes. Otherwise, it's a useless practice. So remember, ineffective college students follow the plans of other people. They constantly switch majors, which is not only a big time waster, but a big money waster. Because the more you switch majors means the more time you spend in college, which means that the more money you spend. And we all know, or maybe you did know, financial aid runs out after a certain period of time. Financial aid is stopped when you don't achieve a particular GPA. And no matter how much we beg, people cannot help us with things that have already happened. We've got to make sure that we're doing everything possible to create a goal and a plan for ourselves that solidifies a good future. So as part of this, this beginning with the end in mind, I want for us to do a little bit of a visualization exercise, right? I want for you to make sure that I, I want you to be in this moment, right? Because remember at the beginning, I said that your next looks nothing like your now. I'll say that again for me, for you. Your next, right? Your next steps in life. It looks nothing like your now. That's very, very important for you to, for you to realize because if you dwell too much on what looks like uh, like right now, you'll never be able to visualize yourself going somewhere else, doing something else, right? So you need to know that your next looks nothing like your now. But if you want your next to be better than your now, you need to visualize what that means and what that's going to look like. So I want you to really, really, really think deeply. I want you to think deeply. I want you to try to uh, uh, cancel out, cancel out those distractions. If your home, if your home is in your room and they're talking to you, be like, "Bruh, I need to be quiet for a second or two. If it's your friend and she, uh, your girlfriend and she's in your room, I, I need you to be quiet for a second because I got, I got a future in mind and I need to think for a second. So I want you to think deeply about what has happened in your life over the past year, right? Now, when you think about that, I want you to also think about how has this last year felt? How has this last year felt to you, right? And how do you want the next year to look? Meaning going forward, going forward, how do I want it to look? 
How do I want it to look? I'll give an example. I'm beginning with the end in mind. And one of the things that I've been really, really working diligently at is changing my mindset about money, right? And so uh, as, as, most, as most women do, I love to shop. It is my love language, okay? But because one of the things that I've really, really been intent on as of late is building wealth for myself. And we know uh, being a teacher is not the thing to make you rich, okay? You got to teach for love. So what happens is, so since I'm trying to create wealth, I've cut back on some, of, I've cut back on this shopping to some degree. I've cut back on a whole lot of and then cutting back on my shopping, what I've done is I've reallocated that money to begin investing. And now that I've started investing, I started investing maybe about two years ago. I love it, right? Because I'm seeing my money grow. And I have, a, I have a goal for that money. Because one of the things that I want to be able to do is not only do I want to live a debt-free life, but I also want to be able to be a blessing to other people. What does that look like for me? That looks like wealth. That looks like accumulating enough money that when I run across uh, a said students who may be having difficulty paying tuition, I'm able to give uh, a tuition money. I'm able to give book money. I'm able to help my nieces and nephews buy their first home. I'm able to do things that wealth allows people to do. It gives a certain amount of freedom, but that means I have to visualize what I want and I have to visualize how I'm going to live differently to achieve that goal. And so the very same thing applies to you. So if you know that right now you haven't been doing your absolute best in terms of your, 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 your class work, your, your class engagement, your uh, uh, working with your teachers, now is not the time for excuses. Because I could have used excuses in terms of building wealth. I could have said, well, they don't pay me a lot as a teacher. I could have talked about, well, I'm a single person. I have to pay all my bills myself. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because excuses don't make money, right? Excuses don't build success. What builds success and what builds character is an ability to overcome the things that could have held us back. And so if you say to yourself, well, I didn't have anybody to tell me what college was. Neither did I. I'm a first generation college student. And neither did most of the people that work here to some degree. But we had a vision in mind. We, we had a, a vision in mind for what we wanted for our future. And I need for you to make that vision bigger than your distractions. Make your vision bigger than your distractions. If your vision is to one day go to medical school, then you know when so-and-so comes around and they say, hey, everybody going to Thirsty Thursday. Well, you know, you got a test on Friday. You can't go to Thirsty Thursday. You've got to get prepared. Because uh, uh, Dr. Barnes or whoever your teacher is still has an expectation about your performance. And they don't really care a whole lot about what's happening outside of the classroom. They need to see you performing and engaging, right? Because even though that's just one class, that's a grade on your transcript that is going to be viewed when you go, when you, when you're trying to get into these graduate programs and these medical schools and these internships. Because you understand that everything leads to something else. Next step. When we're beginning with the end in mind, we get things in order. We get things in order. Another, another word for order is structure, right? Young folks sometimes, and sometimes old people too, because I can be like this, right? Sometimes we don't like structure because that, that means that I've got to, uh, uh, things A, B, C, D, E have got to be lined up in a very specific order. But folks, We've got to make sure that if we're going to accomplish the things that we say we're going to accomplish, we have to have structure and order for our lives. You said, what, well, Dr. Hall, what does that look like? I'm a college student, right? I'm still not quite sure of what it is that I want to do. Well, what that looks like is this. If I want to be a successful college student, then that means that I'm setting aside a specific definitive time in my daily schedule to study, 
Very simple. It may, I may start off because maybe I'm not used to studying. Maybe in high school, I went to an easy high school, so I didn't have to study. Or maybe school was never important to me before, so I never made studying a priority. So maybe you start off with something like 45 minutes to an hour of simply going over the notes and information that you got from your, cla from your classes, and you do this on a daily basis, right? But maybe you say, well, I'm past that point. I really, I need to study a little bit more. So maybe you take it to, you stay every day for at least one to two hours. Then that includes Saturday and Sunday. You're going to make sure that you have all your assignments done. You're going to make sure that you're reading. And even if your teacher hasn't given you any homework or any reading material, you're going to review the things you've done in the past. You're going to make sure that you've answered all your, your class emails and completed all those assignments and not done a rush job, but you've given yourself enough time to redo things to make sure that you're operating in a spirit of excellence. When you do these things in order, it also has a, a, a it also creates a greater, greater sense of self-worth, right? Because what happens is, is that you begin to understand that you're somebody who can accomplish things. You're somebody who, who knows how to stick to, uh, has stick to it. You have tenacity, you have endurance. But that only happens when we establish structure in our lives. The next habit in action, when we begin with the end in mind, is that we do differently. We do differently. Um, doing differently means that I have my habit in action. It means that I do the things that matter most. Even if nobody else is doing them, I'm doing the things that matter most. I'll give you an example. One of the things that uh, used to always blow my mind is I would have students who would um, come from high school and they say, oh, well, I made A's in English when I was in high school. I chose English as a major because it's so easy. It comes easy to me. And what happens is, is that believing that something is easy because it once came easy to you is the biggest setup for failure. It's a big setup for failure because every, every step in our lives should cause us to evolve or change and become more complex people, just like these things become more complex. So what happens is, is I've got to, I, when I begin with the end in mind, I've got to do differently, things differently than I've done before. One of the first things that you might want to do is to write a mission statement for yourself. We said, Dr. Hall, what is a mission statement? Your, your mission statement would be, I, I want to call it, um, the French referred to it as a raison d'etre, right? Your reason for being. What is the thing that you are intent on accomplishing with your life? This is your mission statement. So such as, let's say, for instance, um, I want to become a doctor because I see that there is uh, there are health care inequities uh, because of uh, racial disparities. And I have witnessed them in my community. And I want to become a doctor because I want to combat some of these racial disparities in health care. Right. That's a mission. That's a goal. So as part of that, I not only want to have that end game in mind, but I want to set meaningful and realistic goals that are going to help get me there. I want to set meaningful and realistic goals that are going to help get me there. That may mean that I need to start looking up uh, internships at hospitals. I might need to start looking up to see if anybody has any study abroad programs for uh, people of color that want to become doctors. I need to do things that are going to put me closer and closer to my end goal, right? And even for my people that don't have uh, a, a specific idea of what they want to major in, I encourage you to start doing some research about career options. It's not too late because what you don't want to do is number one, you don't want to major in something simply based on the fact that somebody else told you to do it or because somebody else told you that's going to make you some money because that may not be your calling, right? One of the things I always tell uh, my students, I call them my babies, my former students, is you always want to make sure that you do the thing that inspires you. 
For me, education is inspirational. I've always wanted to be in education since I was five years old. And you say, how do you know that, Dr. Hall? How do you really know you want to be an educator since you were five? I used to play school in our basement. I had a chalkboard set up in my parents' basement. I knew I was going to be in education, right? And so even if it doesn't come that easy to you, I want you to think about what is the thing that you feel in your heart that you were purpose to do? And money becomes a secondary thing because once you figure out what's your purpose to do and you become excellent in that thing, money will eventually come. So the first paradigm, the first paradigm um, that we work with when we talk about having a vision in our mind is that everything is create, created twice. Paradigm one says everything is created twice, first mentally and then physically. Everything is created twice, first mentally and then physically, right? And so I wanted to show you how powerful it is for us to visualize ourselves doing the things that we're believing to be done in our lives, right? So, I brought you what you see on the screen and you can, you really probably can't see it. I wish I could blow it up a little bit more, but I can't. What you see on the screen, ladies and gentlemen, is a, a picture from my high school yearbook. It's a picture from my high school yearbook and I'm gonna blow your mind with something, right? So in this picture, because remember the paradigm one is everything is created twice. First mentally, right? I got a mental image and then it's created physically. So this picture, in this picture from my high school yearbook, believe it or not, it says, in five years, I see myself, and I said, in graduate school in the Atlanta University Center. And it says, in 10 years, I see myself as a college professor in the Atlanta University Center. I feel like shouting, but I ain't going to get churchy on y'all. So what happens is this, right? Again, I'll say this. I wrote this down. I wrote this in my high school yearbook, right? Five years, I saw myself in graduate school at the Atlanta University Center. At 10 year, in 10 years, I saw myself as a college professor in the Atlanta University Center. I wanna tell you how powerful this is. I wrote it down with no idea possible of how that was going to happen. As I told you before, I'm a first generation college student. My father had one year, he had one year of college before he was kicked out and my mother has her GED. So I had no blueprint for how this was done. And at that time we didn't have the internet. I graduated in 1993 and we didn't have the internet at that time. We had computers, but there was no internet. So this was all, this was just like, I'm writing this down, but I don't know this to be, I, I, you know, I, this is what I want to do, right? So let me tell you, in five years, it, it, it took me longer than five years to get to graduate school there because I finished my master's at uh, Tennessee State University. But in six years, I was at Atlanta University Center working on my doctorate at Clark Atlanta University. And by the year eight, by year eight, no, by year seven, I'm sorry, I was a professor at Morris Brown College. So it wasn't even 10 years, it was actually eight. And this all came from first a mental picture. After I had a mental picture, I physically wrote it down. And I made little steps, step by step, that got me closer toward the end goal. Little steps, step by step by step, that got me closer toward the end goal, right? And, and a very similar thing happened even when I got to Cheney was that I originally came to Cheney as a consultant, and I said to myself, after the second time I came, I said, I can see myself working there. I can see myself working there. And so what are you visualizing for your future? Because there's, no, there's nothing so special about me that the same thing cannot be true for you. I was not born with a silver spoon. I'm from the hood in South Memphis, the same place that Triple Six Mafia is from. I'm a first generation college student. Didn't come from any sort of special background, but I had a vision for my life. 
And, and being quite honest with you, the vision is not complete. I continue to work because I believe that the only things that don't change are dead things. But each step requires a mental manifestation, a mental vision, and then the physical manifestation. But the in-between parts mean that I need to be making steps toward those goals, steps. And again, I repeat, we cannot allow ignorance to be an excuse. Well, Dr. Hall, nobody is saying this to me. Nobody told me, nobody told me. I'm sure nobody really told Dr. Spears. Nobody probably told Ms. Vargas. But you've got to understand the only life that you have is the one that you're living. Nobody can plan out your life for you except for you. And you have a world of information at your fingertips. If you see yourself in medical school, it doesn't matter if nobody in your family is a doctor. Get a, get a vision board, cut out a picture or draw a picture, right? With a stethoscope and put your, put your face on top of that, that stick figure and put Dr. Uh, Yamika Kenzel, whatever your name is, under that picture and put doctor in front of it. And every day you'll be confronted by your next. Every day you'll be confronted by your next. Paradigm number two, I make a, meaning con a meaningful contribution to the world around me. Folks, I cannot say it enough that money, because we remember we're saying begin with the end in mind. Money, regardless of what social media shows us, money cannot be your end goal. Money cannot be your end goal. How is what you plan on doing going to benefit not only your life, but the world that you live in, right? I'll give it to you like this. I'll never forget, this was many, many years ago um, because Tupac was still alive. And I use this example all the time because I think it is so, uh, I think it is so, so pivotal what he said. He was doing an interview on MTV and the, um, the news correspondent, she asked him, um, since he was always singing about the hood, why doesn't he live there, right? And he, he said, as long as there are people that are poor and struggling, even though I fight for them, I wouldn't be safe there. You said, well, Dr. Howe, what does that have to do with money not being my end goal? Because even as rich as he was at the time, because he was rich at the time, right? He understood that he, it wasn't his, his wealth wasn't a safe thing until he put other people in position in the same position that he was in. That didn't mean that he was just giving away money, but it also meant that he was in a position to create opportunities for other people. So on the screen, guys, you see my why, right? Uh, I put a picture, this was a conference I spoke at years ago, and you see all these little girls of different ages from like 10 all the way up to like 19 or 20, right? That's my why. My why is I want to make sure that young Black girls, right, young Black girls see what they could be and exceed it. I want them to know that it's not about where you come from. It's not about uh, 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 what you didn't have. It is all about what you can envision yourself doing. And I want to make sure that I'm one of those people that shows them what is possible. And for you, it may not even be as big as all the girls, right? It may be something as simple as I want to show my little brother and my little sister what is possible but you're not going to do that being ineffective by not going to class, by not doing your best when you go to class. And even if, and, and this is something, and I can't say this enough folks, excuses are part, they are part and parcel of ineffective people. So if you're saying to me, well, I can't really get into uh, Dr. Moody's class, I hope it's not a real Dr. Moody, but I can't really get into Dr. Moody's class because his class is boring to me. You know, uh, I take it online and it's hard for me to get engaged when I'm online. That's an excuse. 
because I don't care if Dr. Moody is the most monotone person you've ever met in your life. You're paying for that class, number one. Number two, it is still your job to acquire the knowledge that Dr. Moody has. Because you understand that even at one piece, that's part of your life's puzzle that is going to move you to your next, which I keep saying looks nothing like your now. So what kind of meaningful contribution are you going to make once you achieve and realize those goals? Because I, I think that more often than not, one of the biggest mistakes that many young people make is to think that their youth is an excuse. Well, I don't know, I'm young, I got time to figure it out. Let me tell you something. I'm sure every adult on here can tell you how quickly time goes. I still remember like yesterday when my mother dropped me off at my college dormitory and she was crying and I was crying. And I thought, man, but then when she drove off, you know, it was Liddy in the city, okay? But it was still, it, I, I, it was just like yesterday, you know, and that was 28 years ago. Life moves at a pace that we cannot slow down. And so what that means for you is you've got to make sure that you are aligning right actions with intent. So it's not enough for you just to come to Cheney University, you know, and, and tell everybody you're going to college. What is now different about you? What are you learning that is going to put you in a better position so that you'll be impactful and aspirational to those around you? Because not everybody get, is getting this opportunity. There are a lot of people who say, man, I wish I could have went to college. If I can tell you about the number of people that I went to high school with, that said, man, uh, Carolyn Hall, I sure wish, you know, uh, I had went to college or I sure wish things were differently, right? And I esteem myself above no man. That's, that's foolish if you do, right? But one of the things I do not do is I make sure that I don't live life with regret. That mean that I don't sometimes fail, right? Because failure is simply a first attempt in learning. But it also means that I'm not going to try that I'm not not going to try and I'm not going to structure myself and set myself up for success. And that means I have to begin with the end in mind. So as a recap, as a recap, right? I want for you to think about habit two. I want you to think about habit two and how this applies to not only your, only your college career, but how this applies to your future. And if you gotta get a t-shirt made, I want you to remind yourself that your next looks nothing like your now. And that, that is gonna take some decisiveness. You don't have time to be like, oh no, I'm not really. I'm not, you know, I can't, I ain't thinking about all that right now. I don't want to be, uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, no excuses. Next, you want to make sure you make a mission statement for your life. Make a mission statement for your life. Doesn't have to be a two page essay, but what is it? What is your mission in life? What is your why, your raison d'etre? What do you want your life to look like? Draft important goals because your goals are going to be your steps to get you to, to that end point. And if you're still undecided about what you're going to do, I want you to explore career options. Don't wait till junior and senior year. Start now. Start now. And so I thank you guys so much uh, for your time and attention. Uh, and let me see if there are any questions in the chat that you want to pose. Yes, that would be a good idea. If you have any questions for Dr. Hall, put them in the chat. I will say that uh, I have posted Habit 2 so you can read about it in my uh, GAC 121 shell. And um, I will ask the other professors if they haven't done so yet to please post it so you can not only listen to these great words of Dr. Hall, 
and the way she brings them to life, but you can go ahead and read about them. And there's also uh, books in the Academic Success Center. And so you would look up Habit 2, and you can do that and come back and do the survey if you want. But I did put the uh, URL for the survey in the chat. But if you have any any questions for Dr. Hall at all, she had a lot of great information. You might want to ask her about investing. You might want to ask her about um, you know visualizing your goals. You heard a lot of great information to bring habit to uh, put uh, begin with the end in mind um, to bring that to life. So any questions? And you know that Dr. Miles uh, in our um, professional studies department, she's all about business. <laughs> <laughs> And she, she, she gave a second to Dr. Hall about get invested. So yeah, I agree with you, Jalen. This was a really good presentation. Um, and we're gonna go ahead, um, ask, ask questions now. And um, uh, we have some questions too. I'm gonna ask the team. I'm gonna ask the support team, which involves all the uh, success coaches and um, any of the uh, other folks that are, are, are listening in, uh, if they have some questions for our audience, because I'm getting ready to go ahead and give away $10 Wawa gift cards. And as you know, the place to pick them up now is over with Miss Michelle Malloy in the building that Dr. Hall has right behind her. Uh, Miss Malloy is right over there in the, uh, in the lobby. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a little uh, upper respiratory. Um, so how do you know who did the form? We can't know. Uh, some good question, Jalen. How do we know who did the survey? Well, the survey collects the names. Um, the survey automatically collects, connect, collects the names and uh, we go in there periodically and check them. You don't have to add your name. It's already added electronically, so not to worry. So yes, we always enjoy our time with you, Dr. Hall. Stay a few more minutes while we go ahead and run by some questions. I'm trying okay. to adjust my view because I've got you. Okay, I want the gallery. All right, I've got the gallery because we're going to be picking out some um, some people to ask questions if they have a question and then they are going to be picking out people to answer those questions so get ready uh habit two dr hall had some great things to say about it but as i said you can read it yourself as well and that's might help you do the survey uh, uh, uh a little bit better and so those books are located in the academic success center the hard copies and my class has them in D2L, at least they have through Habit 2. I'll go ahead and post some more habits uh, up there so you can read the chapters. But if you were listening, um, you, if you were listening, you can answer these questions that we're gonna ask right now and win yourself a $10 Wawa gift card. So who, does anybody, any of the life success coaches have a question that they would like to pose to our audience of 116 and maybe get a winner for today? Uh, Miss Laura, Miss Tracy, Miss Katrina. Where's Miss Katrina? There's Miss Katrina hiding out. Anybody have a question? If not, I will be happy to go ahead and put one out there. I, I have one. Um, beautiful. beautiful. Ms. Excellent, Katrina. excellent presentation, uh, Dr. Hall. Always. Thank you, Sora. I'm I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> always. Oh, good good heaven. <laughs> always. Thank you. Um, I took a lot of notes. A lot of notes I'll be sharing uh, with, with my cohort and with other students that come to see me. Um, but one thing that I, I you, that got me was you talked a lot about the importance of everything leads to something else. And you stated um, order equals what? So I wanted the students to hopefully someone was listening. Order means what? There was a special something that you talked about um, in regards to everything it leads to something else. So. Oh, you got me stumped on that one. You got me stumped on that one. <laughs> order leads to something. Order, order leads to, okay, okay. Order leads to, I think I can probably figure it out, but this is one for the students. Did you wanna go ahead and, and, and go deep into these five pages and find a student and maybe pick one out and see if they, they're on that same frequency and can answer your question. Let's see. How about is this uh, Christiana Albert? There she is, Christiana. What do you think? Order equals what? I don't know the answer. Oh, me, Thanks for trying, that, Christiana. <laughs> 
want to pick out want to pick out pick out another one um let's see <laughs> even Jalen doesn't remember that one <laughs> you got a stumper there miss katrina got a stumper yeah yeah i wrote that took some i took some specific notes and that was something that really um stood out and um yeah, I mean, I, I got other questions too, but I can try uh, Dolomine. Dolomine, where are you at? Dolomine, your time is Dolomine. up. Here. Dolomine, Ghibli, Wifa, where are you at, Miss Wef Mr. Wifa? I like to hear me. Say what? I can hear you. What was the question? So oh, Dr. Man. Hall had mentioned that everything leads to something else. And in her presentation, she talked about order and order means also something, uh, which was very, very important in her presentation. How do we go about setting up something within our day-to-day? -day? Uh, I think I wasn't here for that part, but can I take a guess? Sure. Yes. Is it like time management or being organized? Mm -hmm. No. That was an excellent guess. That was an excellent guess. Did he? Uh, is that good for you, Miss Katrina? That is good. I mean, that's that's absolutely um, that's part of where she was going with that. But mm -hmm. it was sure. So what? time management. Can you, repeat, can you repeat that one more time? You're breaking up. Order leads to what, Miss Katrina? Structure. 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 Order leads to structure. Yep, time management. Yeah, absolutely. So very good. I'd yep, say very good. And I want I want to say this to you guys too. Let me tell you something. One of the most awesome things is, you know, everybody keeps talking about the economy and how bad the economy is. But I remember um earlier, I think it was last year, I had the it's just like right after COVID had first started. So it might be two years at this point. But um one of the things I was reading about uh, um researched was that um that most millionaire most millionaires are made during times of economic downturn most millionaires are made during times of economic downturn right and so right now you guys because let me tell you something D don't believe you know people say um money the root of all evil that's a, that's misrepresentation of what that scripture really says it really says that the love of money is the root of all evil right it actually says money solve a multitude of problems right so you guys while you're in school you could be securing the bag for your future as you work on your studies but it's going to take structure it's going to take structure. It's going to take order. I, one of my students who um, at Clark and Lenny University, this was during a time when uh, property was really, really low. Uh, property was really, really cheap in Atlanta, and it's not like that anymore. But he hustled himself. And I had a couple of students that actually did this, right? He hustled up some money, and he bought a house in the hood, and he rented out, I think it was like a three or four bedroom, he rented out the other rooms to his homeboys, right? Which meant that they paid his actual mortgage. Now he was still in school. He was still in school. So what happens is by the time he graduated from college, this man was a homeowner. And there's no telling what that house is now worth in Atlanta because the prices in Atlanta have doubled, sometimes even tripled especially by the Atlanta University Center. So some of the things that you want to secure for your future could be uh, in the works now if you guys were working with some structure in place. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Hall. You always got the best stories. All righty. I wonder if any of my other, thank you so much, Miss Katrina. We got our first Willer Do Do winner, Dolomine Wefa. Uh, do any of the other success coaches or our wonderful tutor, Miss Jen, have uh, any questions for our listening audience here? Something that you were listening to uh, 
here. I got one. All right. Um, Who knows? I have one. Oh, you got one. Go one. ahead, Miss Trace. Um, oh. And uh, thank you, Dr. Hall. Like, You're uh, welcome. It was just, yes, it was, it was uh, very, very, very informational. And my um, question, I think um, it just really stuck out to me because I'm always saying the same thing. Um, so I hope that they know the answer. They should. But uh, what cannot be your only motivator? Oh, money. Oh, who put money. that up? You can't get any Jordan money. Griffin. No, sorry, Jordan. Okay, you have to be called on. <laughs> That's <laughs> how it works. But Jordan <laughs> happened to have that right. That was kind of, we all had that one. All right, mm -hmm. all right. I'm going to give it to Jordan, okay? I'm going I'm to give it to Jordan. Jordan, no more hollering out, though, okay? But but I got you, Jordan. Joe R, Joe R, how do you spell Jordan? J-O-U-R, J-O-U-R-D. Yeah, you gave him an easy one, but it was right on the money. Yeah, but I did, you know, it just makes sense, like, to hear it over and over and over again, that you have to have some other ways to, to motivate you, because just like Dr. Hall said, a lot of um, entrepreneurs make it when um, there's a recession or there's, you know, there isn't a lot of money available. So. But this idea of not letting money be your God is so important. I mean, yes. um, you look at look at our former president, the former resident of the White House. He got all the money in the world, but does he have any friends? Does he have any real true loyalty? Does he have people that love him? I don't know about that. He looks like a lonely guy to me. Uh, so that money can't can't do it. Uh, all right, that was beautiful. We got Jordan, we got Dolomine, and anybody else? How about you, Miss uh, uh, Laura, or how about you, Jen? Anybody have a question for the gang, for the kids? I saw Miss Jen nodding, so I think. Yeah. <laughs> I thought she was it looks like she's. Uh -huh. I was trying to unmute myself. I always have trouble with that. <laughs> um, can, do any of the students remember the Tupac story and? why it was important i like that yes the lecture what was the point of the uh, dr hall's tupac story and so you get to call find somebody here in this crowd that you can call on first and